Hey, what's good guys? Welcome back to another awesome weekly market forecast. And as usual, it's always awesome to share my directional biases and as well as my thought processes and as well as the points of interest on the pairs that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. It's always awesome to do so. Lovely to have you guys in the weekly market forecast with me. So otherwise, guys, let's cut no, let's waste no more time and let's cut straight to that weekly market forecast. Let's cut straight to it there we go we've got our weekly market forecast over there guys so the pairs that we're going to be having a look at first of all the dxy aussie cad aussie frank we're going to be looking at AUD JPY, new zealand dollar yen which we have a position on so we'll be more so explaining what our current management thought processes are on that pair and then as well as us that we do have a long-term bias on that pair as well so otherwise guys let's get straight into the dxy we're going to be starting off first of all on the four hour, well, we'll try and stick to the four hour on most of these pairs. We will reference daily structure as well. Like I always tell you guys, if we're ever looking at a chart and we can't see the individual candlesticks, then it's just as good as us viewing and analyzing daily structure. Once we can zoom the chart to the point that we can see our individual candlesticks, then only we're looking at the exact time frame structure that obviously our chart suggests we're looking at. So in this case, the four hour. So otherwise, guys, let's just zoom out just so that we can reference some daily structure there. And on our daily structure, all the we were kind of paying attention to and focusing on was just this major ascending structure so we've got a nice beautiful first touch in this area over here we can see we've got a second touch over there and you guys can see price action is approaching this third touch region over here so obviously we're paying attention to how is price approaching this third touch region inside of the smaller or daily ascending structure and if we just zoom out or zoom in rather to the point where we can see these individual candlesticks we'll get a, a nice gander at some four hour structure there so us looking at some four hour structure basically what we can see is just this most recent structure over here we've got some sort of an ascending structure so if i just grab my chart and just move it to the center over here you guys can see that this new ascending structure here has a nice beautiful first touch in this area over here we've got a second touch up and around in this region over here and you guys can see that we can expect a nice third touch somewhere and or somewhere along the resistance trend line of this structure over here. So obviously you guys can see that we are expecting some sort of that touch area where we will be looking for some downside momentum. But to speak about what type of an entry we'll be looking for here on the DXY, we can clearly see that these risk entries won't be working for us because yes, price action is giving us some impulsive moves to the downside, being able to violate structure, but otherwise we're seeing some momentum breaking back above resistance areas, which is something that we don't want to be seeing when, we, when, we, when we're trying to look for some risk entries. So what we going to be doing for ourselves is this current for our uptrend that we've got on our charts we're going to be waiting for this uptrend that we've got here signified by this up uh support trend line we're going to wait for this trend line basically to first of all be violated by price action what will be an even safer entry we've got our equal highs here our high time frame resistance area if we do wait for the momentum to push price action back below these resistance areas there and obviously we wait for that nice beautiful corrective touch of our previous resistance that price action has broken above and obviously momentum we'll see pushing price action back below then obviously we can look for those nice beautiful reduced risk entries for some dollar weakness and this is kind of the setup that i'm going to be looking at here on the dxy i am still bearish by infrastructure that gives me some dollar weakness but i am not going to be excited trying to take any risk entry that i that i that that presents itself to me on the chart but what i will be doing is because i can see that the risk entries aren't working we're going to be exercising some patience and waiting either for that nice third touch followed by a reduced risk entry or we'll wait for price action to break back below these resistance areas there where we will find our nice higher time frame reduced risk entries so guys we are still sell bias on the dxy um yeah I guess beautiful buyers, uh, beautiful points of interest over there. All we've got to do, or all price action warrants from us, is just some patience for us to wait for this to play out. So, guys, let's go into the first pair that we're going to be having a look at, and that is Aussie CAD. So, Aussie CAD, we will be referencing some higher time frame structure there as well, but we will kind of try and stick to the four hour for our main directional biases. So, otherwise, guys, we do have this nice, beautiful ascending structure there. First touch, second touch, third touch, not quite, but almost but we do have a nice uh, break above this resistance area over there otherwise just coming into this ascending structure there you guys can see that price action has just violated this nice beautiful um, support trend line so our nice ascending trend line over there but if we come down to just the most recent price action over here what we will see is price action kind of being in some sort of a corrective structure as we're moving to the downside so we clearly do have the nice first touch nice second touch or third touch area over there we were identifying some sort of a descending structure but we're seeing momentum pushing in the opposite direction which in this case we were short-term bullish bias on this pair and not higher time frame 
uh, bullish bias. We were high time frame bearish bias. So what that means is that we were waiting for some momentum to come into the market, push prices up, which we were or we had obviously pinpointed a nice sell area for our sell bias trading opportunities. So since price action obviously has not come to this area as yet, we can still be bullish bias on this pair. So taking a look at what we have here, obviously we do see some most recent downside momentum, which just like the DXY is already telling us that guys, if you are looking for a risk entry, now is not the environment to look for a risk entry. Do yourself a favor and look for those reduced risk entries so obviously we do have our support trend line over here or at least our horizontal support guys prices can violate the support but what will mean a lot to us is if we don't see price action basically from a four hour breaking and closing below these support structures here or at least these support structures over there why because we do have another point of interest there where we do see a nice momentum shift so price action can just easily break below tap into that point of interest and then obviously we see that upside momentum push, pri pushing price action back above the support and then look for that break uh, corrective retest before we find some upside momentum obviously taking us into this area where we're looking for those higher time frame sell bias trading opportunities so otherwise i am still bullish bias on this pair i will still be watching out what's going on there obviously i'm no longer interested in risk entries on this pair anymore because price action is clearly showing me that the environment is not conducive for those risk entries so what we will be doing is paying attention to price action breaking back above these support structures there and giving us our corrective retest of these support structures over there and this is basically where we're going to find our reduced risk entry our first reduced risk entry on a smaller time frame and that's where our bullish price trading opportunities might present the good or might present slightly better bullish bias um, probabilities on this trade so otherwise guys getting into the next pair that we're going to be having a look at yes we're going to be looking at some Aussie sus franc so let's just go into that so guys on Aussie sus franc we've got a nice bearish bias over there just hoping that price action does not run away and just comes to give us this nice um, sell buy trading opportunity there but otherwise higher time frame we do have some structure over there that we can reference but i guess not really necessary for us to be referencing that structure there we'll just stick to just the most recent uh four hour structure over here so most recent four hour structure we've got this nice ascending structure over there signified by this trend line we see momentum coming in to violate this trend line there also in a way giving us a nice set of equal lows over here after we've seen these nice equal lows we were obviously our eyes were prepared looking for that head and shoulder structure which is why we have this previous resistance that price action has broken above broken back below and we've got a nice point of interest up there this is our highest area where we could be looking for obviously that higher time frame sell bias trading opportunity now otherwise what do we have here we've got a nice beautiful set of equal highs and on a lower time frame yes i did go and refine this point of interest to a lower time frame but on a lower time frame we do have a point of interest just there in this area here guys so the kind of setup that i'll be looking for the my first sell bias trading opportunities or where my first area of probabilities will be is this resistance just up here just above these equal highs guys once we see price action or if price action does have the momentum to come up violate these equal highs we will be looking for reversal structures in this area slightly above those equal highs obviously if we do not find those then we wait for momentum to push price action back below these equal highs and then we wait for that nice beautiful corrective retest before we look for that downside momentum to basically follow through all the way to the 90 percent rule of this new ascending structure that we see developing here so guys we are sell bias here's the setup that we're looking for we've got a nice beautiful point of interest obviously if this sell fails then we will be looking at this higher time frame high probability high sell region over here so otherwise those are two probability areas we have to wait for price action to enter those areas then obviously provide to us entry criteria before we pull the trigger let's move on to our next pair we're going on to AUD JPY so coming into AUD JPY guys AUD JPY looks like it could be giving some aggressive traders a nice opportunity to jump in but since price action has not delivered to us a proper third touch in this area here, I don't think I'll be taking this aggressive entry. But otherwise, having a look at our higher time frame structure, just referencing what our higher time frame structure was, we've got this. I think we have to go on the daily for this because this is actually a weekly structure that we've drawn out there. But we will be able to see that weekly structure on a nice daily chart. So on this high time frame structure, we've got this nice ascending structure there. First touch, second touch, third touch. We can see price has been aggressive towards this third touch region. Obviously, only, only warranting us already to look for those reversal structures to the downside before we take our entries. Now, coming back to the time frame that we were, let's just reference our immediate for our structure over there. We already know that from a high time frame, we are at that third touch region. We've seen price action coming aggressively to this area. Now, ever since we approached this area there, guys, we've got some extreme resistance up here. Let's just grab this over here. We've got some extreme resistance up in this area over here. And we've also got some extreme support down in this area here. 
Clearly, price has been stuck inside some sort of a range. Ever since we created extreme resistance and support, we've been stuck inside of those. So obviously, this becomes our important key selling area. We want to always be selling from the higher of whatever range we identify and obviously buying from the low of the range. Now, obviously, since we're at that third touch region, we're not interested in any buy, uh, bullish bias trading opportunities. We are interested in those bearish bias trading opportunities. Now, on a lower time frame, I did isolate this nice, beautiful ascending structure over here after we see this momentum or at least most recent momentum coming into the market, followed by this nice ascending structure over there. And obviously, um, I have been avoiding dropping down in the time frames, but it seems like we will <laughs> we'll need to drop down onto the one hour. But otherwise, let's just drop down onto the one hour because it's going to be kind of valuable to us to speak about. Otherwise, on a one hour, this is the ascending structure that we did isolate, only giving us a nice first touch and a second touch, no third touch in this region. Also, we did tap into this POI over there, so it's not, not really... Um, confusing that price action is starting to give us some sell bias um at least some sell bias activity but nonetheless obviously we guys you guys do see this nice double top structure over here followed by a nice break and a retest of this re neckline over there will give us will give to us or provide to us a nice sell bias trading opportunity so as much as now we've got these nice resistance areas over there all we need to do is wait to see price action violating these resistance areas obviously retesting this area here where we can begin to start looking for our reversal structures to the downside if we don't if we do not find those reversal structures we wait for price action to push price back below this um, equal highs over here and then obviously correct the retest on a smaller time frame for that downside momentum so we've got both a risk entry and a reduced risk entry planned for aj it is in quite an aggressive area because we didn't get all of our criteria filling fulfilling this nice ascending structure there but nonetheless let's not be too picky about the trade that we do take let's take this trade even if we'd have to take this trade on a reduced risk meaning a much smaller risk than we normally would let's do that to involve ourselves in the trading opportunity use it more uh, 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 as some sort of a learning experience as well now let's move on we do have a nice beautiful sell bias on aj over there we finally have some structure that does warrant us to be sell bias at this third touch region let's go on to that new zealand dollar yen and new zealand dollar yen like i did tell you guys we do have a position on new zealand dollar yen so i will be explaining my bias same thing as usual but in addition i will also be explaining this position to you guys and how we plan on further managing this position if price action does give us the opportunity so looking at the high time frame structure, guys, let's just go up to a daily, just so just another JPY uh, code pair. So these JPY code pairs have just been very nasty. As you guys can see, I don't have Susiana on my watch list anymore for the week because she's just simply not ready for what I'm planning to do. So otherwise, let's get into, get into New Zealand again. Um, so we basically look at this nice high time frame structure, weekly structure, first touch, second touch over there. And obviously you guys can see we're at this third touch region. We came there impulsively. So that's why we're looking for reversal structures before we start selling. So otherwise, coming down onto the four hour, what we will see here is sort of a similar structure to what we see developing there on our AUD JPY but kind of slightly different because it is its own pair otherwise we do have this nice ascending structure this ascending structure we did get a proper first touch you guys will see this level of structure that I use there on a one hour if we do drop down to a one hour but otherwise we do have a first touch there second touch third touch we had this nice beautiful pin bar um, and then obviously though that beginning of starting off price action starting to violate some supports after we saw that violation of supports we identified another ascending structure over here and then obviously we had a point of interest we simply waited for price action to tap into the point of interest and then we took our candlestick which is a one hour pin bar um, to the downside so we basically sold off this one hour pin after we saw this one hour pin coming right close to our point of interest not quite tapping into the point of interest but definitely giving us a nice first touch second touch and completion of the third touch region over there and as well as we had the smaller ascending structure in there plus actually